Visual Studio is the ultimate way of building hybrid applications for iOS, Android, Windows, and the web with C Sharp, Blazor, and Dynamic Maui, and sharing code between all of them. Visual Studio makes it easy to get up and running for local development, but also offers rich, deep integrations in the IDE to boost your developer productivity when you're developing your apps. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, it means when you're setting up your machine for .NET MAUI and web development, with just a single click, it will install everything for you, from SDK, workloads, and even managing all of the Android tools and SDKs and Android emulators. You can even connect to a remote Mac machine to do iOS builds and deploy and debug them to remote iOS simulators that will show up on your Windows machine or to iOS devices. Now, when you're developing your applications, Visual Studio is packed with developer productivity features. Of course, all of the rich debugging and IntelliSense features directly inside of XAML or your C Sharp, and of course, AI-assisted coding with GitHub Copilot. But it also offers different integrations into the different platforms to offer things like hot reload. This means when you're debugging or running your application, just update your Razor or C Sharp and hit save, and boom, it updates in real time. You get live integrations to see the tree outline of your application and properties, and you can even package up your applications directly from Visual Studio. So let me show you how easy it is to get up and running building hybrid applications with Visual Studio and start to build our first applications and share code across our native client apps and our websites, all with C Sharp, Blazor, and .NET MAUI. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and get set up. I've downloaded the Visual Studio installer from the Visual Studio website, and it shows me all the different workloads that I can select. From here, I'm going to first select the .NET Multi-Platform App UI, which is giving me everything that I need for .NET MAUI development. And I'm also going to select the ASP.NET and Web Development workload. This will give me everything I need for the Blazor web development that we're going to do, and I can develop other ASP.NET Core solutions, like a backend for the application. Now from here, the Visual Studio installer will download everything that I need to get started. Not only all of the .NET SDKs, but everything that is needed for ASP.NET Core and also .NET MAUI, including the Android SDKs, .NET MAUI tooling, and so much more. Now based on your machine speed and internet speed, this will take a little bit different time. I sped it up here just so we can get straight into the code. So as soon as Visual Studio is done installing everything, we'll be able to create our first project. Here I can simply launch Visual Studio, and I've installed it before, so I have some recent projects, but we're going to create a new project. From Visual Studio, there are a bunch of project filter types. So you can go down and select, for example, MAUI, which will show us all of our .NET MAUI along with our Blazor hybrid templates. There's also a Blazor hybrid dropdown filter too. This has two different project types, one for just the mobile and desktop app with .NET MAUI, and one that also has a Blazor web application too and shared code with a Razor class library. That's the one we're going to select, and I'm going to name my app my hybrid app. We can select the version of .NET we want to use, the render mode for the Blazor web application, and if we want the sample pages. I'm going to select the default. Now, it's important to remember that server mode that we've selected here is actually specific only for the Blazor web application. The .NET MAUI Blazor hybrid application, everything is running locally inside of the .NET MAUI application using this Blazor web view that we'll show here in a few seconds. But let's explore the project. We have three projects in our solution, and the first at the very bottom here is the web app. This is the Blazor web application, and I selected server so we can see interactive server components, and we can also see imports from additional assemblies, which is our Razor class library. We can also see that it's setting up a few services here, such as the form factor. And this will be important when we want to access platform-specific code on the web or in the native .NET MAUI application. And then we just have normal standard Blazor setup here. So we have our app razor, we have our imports and error pages. And we can see that these are all referencing the shared code in the myhybridapp.shared. Here, all of this code is shared between the .NET MAUI app and the Blazor application, like counter, weather, and home. And this is all going to be shared between the Blazor app and the .NET MAUI hybrid application. Here we can see this is a multi-targeted project for Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows. We can see that it's using that shared project as well. Now we can see it has some other things like components and platform integrations where we would write platform-specific code. It also has other things like as resources, such as fonts and other items like that. 
It also has its own specific razor components, like the imports, for example, to bring in the namespaces into this project. And also have the services. Now, this is where it's actually tapping into native APIs to get the device form factor and the platform and version that it's running on. This is where you can, again, tap into those native APIs of iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows in the .NET MAUI application. Now, it also has a program CS that's going to look pretty similar to the Blazor application. It's registering singletons. It's also starting up the application and registering the Blazor web view. Now here it's registering the app, and this is sort of the housing for the application where we have some shared styles and resources and where the app starts up. It creates a new window because on my apps can be multi-windowed and it creates a main page. And this main page here is just one XAML file. It can also be created in C-sharp code behind that is a Blazor web view that is specifically pointing to the routes and to the index.html. And this is again very similar to what we saw over into the Blazor web application, but it's loading here for the .NET MAUI application. So from here, I can just hit debug up top where I'm selecting my Windows machine. Since I have the .NET MAUI application as a startup, it will build, compile the native Windows application, and then take all of that Razor content and then pull it into that Blazor web view that's running here. And here it is. Our Windows application, it's saying it's running right here on desktop using WinUI and my specific version of Windows. I can resize it, all the CSS styling, all works as expected with Bootstrap in this case, which is the default. Now in Visual Studio, we can actually see a live preview of our application. Now I tap on the page, it will go directly into the XAML where it's at. Now what's great here is that we can then start to modify any of our Razor code. For example, here's the home page. And we can see that it's using the form factor uh, code and injecting that and having it displayed here. Let's go ahead and change it to hello Blazor hybrid, hit the hot reload icon. And again, I can hit that manually or do hot reload on file save, and it updates directly in the live preview and in my running application. So you can take advantage of all of that capability directly from Visual Studio. Now, all I needed to do to get this running on Windows is make sure that my machine is in developer mode. And if I wasn't, Visual Studio would let me know and it would go ahead and prompt me to go into the settings to set that up. So here again is our running application and everything is reflected and we're in a pretty good spot. But I can also bring up DevTools because again, we have that set up in our program file and I can browse what's actually running inside of the Blazor web view right here. And in this case, this is using WebView 2, and on iOS, Android, and Mac, it uses the native controls to render the web content. And now we can just use our application and start creating it directly from Visual Studio. But let's go ahead and get this on other operating systems, and of course, even deploy it to the web. Let's go ahead and put this on Android now. So from the debug dropdown, I'm gonna change the framework to Android. And now we'll see that the Android emulator option is available to me. So if I hit debug on that, we're gonna see that there's actually an error and it's telling me that the Android SDK for this project is required. So I'm gonna double click on it and Visual Studio will prompt me to automatically install the Android SDKs. What's great is that these are on demand. So it will prompt you based on what your project is and what it needs and install it for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and debug on that Android emulator again and Visual Studio is gonna see if I have any Android emulators on my machine and I don't, so it's gonna prompt me to create one. It gives me a default, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. It'll automatically download everything that I need and get it set up. So now that the emulator has been created, we can now go ahead and close this dialog. And then I now see that it says Pixel 7 API 35. I can see the Android emulators in the dropdown. If I had a physical device plugged into my Windows machine, it would also show up here if it's in developer mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this onto the Android emulator. And Visual Studio will automatically bring it up and deploy it and launch it. So here it is, and now what's happening is Visual Studio is packaging up the Android application and it's gonna deploy it into a debug session directly on the Android emulator. And here it is. Our application is now running directly inside of the Android emulator and I get my full application running with all of the dropdown and navigation because it's on a mobile device. I can see that inside of Visual Studio, I have the same exact live preview available. So as I use my application, it's updating in real time for me as well, which is super awesome to see. Now from here, I can do all the same things that I did on Windows. So I could click on the Blazor web view, get brought directly to the code, or I could start to use Hot Reload to make modifications to my running application. 
But let's go ahead and explore how this got set up and started on the different platforms. In the .NET MAUI app, we have the platform folders like Android and iOS, for example. And what we can see inside of them is specific code using native API. So iOS, for example, UIKit. If I go into the main activity, we can see the main activity of the application with Android-specific namespaces. Now let's go ahead and get this running on iOS. I'm gonna change the framework to iOS, and now I can go ahead and connect remotely to my Mac using SSH. When I click on this little icon, it'll bring it up, but I can also go to Tools, Android, or iOS and get access to the Device Managers, SDKs, or pair it to my Mac. Now here, over a secure SSH connection to my Mac that's on my network, it will go ahead and install any required bits, anything that I need to get set up and do a remote compilation and deploy to a simulator that's running on my Mac. Now on Mac, I do need Xcode installed and the simulator's there. But now once I have it connected, from the dropdown, I can see remote devices plugged into that machine or the simulators that are there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one and just hit debug. Now this will go ahead and do a remote build and compilation, like I said, and we'll go ahead and start up the simulator on the machine. Now, the cool part here is that Visual Studio has a remoted iOS simulator. So after it finishes up the build, it will then go ahead and start a full debug session on this remote iOS simulator. Now here it's starting up, and that may take a few seconds based on if you've started it before, but since I'm on my server's machine, I can just use my touch screen as well, and the Visual Studio Remote iOS Simulator will take those touch commands and send them over to the simulator just as if I was on a real device. So this is really nice developer experience, getting everything right there. So now Visual Studio is installing that app, I can see it in the live preview, but also on the Remote iOS Simulator, and I can start using the application just exactly the same as I was before. And just like I could before, I could go in, change that razor code, hit the hot reload, and just like that, it is updated. And we can also see it's using the platform-specific features to say that it's on iOS, specifically 18.4. The iOS Remoted Simulator has a bunch of cool features in it that you can take snapshots, rotation, and a lot more. And we'll put links to the documentation. Now let's go ahead and run this in the web. So here, back in the Blazor web application, I can just set that as my startup project. And now all I need to do is hit debug. This will build up the Blazor web application and we'll go ahead and deploy it and I'll see it directly in my browser. And our server is getting set up and deployed and we'll see our browser here and we'll see that same code. So it does say iOS here because it's the same shared components. Now in this case, what's great is I can click, click around and I get the same exact features and functionality sharing 100% of code between the web app and the .NET MAUI application. And that's how you build and deploy your first hybrid app with Visual Studio. Our local development machine is all set up and we just started to build our very first hybrid applications for iOS, Android, Windows, and the web with C Sharp, Blazor, and .NET MAUI, all with Visual Studio. Hope that you found this getting started video helpful on your learning journey to build hybrid applications directly from Visual Studio. Be sure to browse the documentation to continue that learning journey, and I can't wait to see what you build.